All right, so let's have a look at the properties of metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Um, this is our periodic table. We've seen it before. By now, it's our friend. Um, what you'll see overwhelmingly is that the majority of the periodic table is metal over here and over here. And then you've got these ones here. So from boron, silicon, geranium, germanium, um, the, oh, arsenic, SB, I'm giving up tellurium, actinium, hmm, I can't remember what SB is, I should know that one, doesn't matter. These are our metalloids. Um, and over here, we have our non-metals. So it's a very small section of the periodic table, this little corner here, that's our non-metals. So let's have a look at the properties of them, and this will this will affect how they're used. All right, so we're going to go metal, non-metal, have a look here. So metals have a high luster. They're mostly silver in color, but you do have varying colors. Gold's obviously gold colored. Titanium tends to be pink. Cobalt is blue. Copper is a reddy color, but mostly they're silvery metals. Non-metals, however, are non-lustrous, and they come in varying colors. Metals are excellent to good conductors of both heat and electricity. Non-metals, they just suck at it. They are poor conductors in general. Um, carbon's a, an annoying one. Carbon doesn't fit that bill. And just a little inside baseball. For years, I actually thought carbon was a metalloid because it's clearly non-metal. But it's an excellent conductor of electricity. Um... Malleable and ductile metals, they bend, you can hammer them into a shape, that's what malleable means, or you can stretch them into a wire, that's what ductile means. Solids, however, of your non-metals, they're usually brittle, but you've got some which are hard, some which are soft. Carbon is one when it's a diamond, can be super hard, um, but generally they're quite brittle. Carbon as graphite is very brittle. Um, oxides, this is interesting. If you've got an oxide of a metal and you put it with water, it will make a basic solution, and it is ionic. Um, if you have an oxide of these guys over here, your non-metals, they are acidic and they are molecular, they're covalent. For example, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. The reason that a lot of soft drinks are not ideal for your teeth is that, aside from the phosphorus and stuff in there, but the carbon dioxide makes them fairly acidic. They're acidic because they've got carbon dioxide in them. Um, carbon dioxide makes your blood acidic, which is why you have to breathe out. When you suffocate someone, they don't die because they're not getting enough oxygen. They're dying because they're not getting rid of carbon dioxide and their blood's turning acidic. We like to take a gory here um, in our science. Now, metals form cations, so positive ions, and non-metals form anions, or um, negative ions. Metalloids are super annoying to try and work out when you're first starting, but you get practice with them, especially as there's only a few of them, and to be honest, you'll probably deal with these four, and that's it. Um, sorry, these three, even. You won't deal with arsenic. These three, and that's about it. Um, but non-metals... They really skirt the line here. They can do both, um, depending on... that. They can be either side of this, depending on the situation. All right, so I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. We'll get to you as quick as we can. And, yeah, thanks for watching.